before I take you through the steps of paper piecing, I wanted to show you some designs that I've done using the paper piecing technique. One of my favorite ones is a New York Beauty. This design, this is the New York Beauty, and these points are accomplished by using the paper piecing technique. I don't know a way to get such precision in my points if I'm not using the paper piecing technique. On this one, both of these designs are actually done with paper piecing. Again, those long skinny points, and on this one, the long skinny points, the smaller sections, that's when paper piecing is going to be your friend. This is a traditional mariner's compass. This entire quilt, every block in this quilt, is done with paper piecing. All of these long points, and in the middle of the design, you can see all the points you can only get that precision of points using paper piecing. So I'm going to take you through the steps now. So I've got my design that I want to do. This is what it's going to end up looking like, this cute little tulip. And I've got my design. I've copied it onto a piece of the vellum paper that I talked to you about so that you'll be able to see the fabric on the back side of the paper when I'm working on it. I've made my copy. Now I'm going to decide what size to cut the fabric. So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm gonna measure this segment right here. When I measure that segment, it measures to about one by four inches. I'm gonna add at least an inch to that measurement. So if I'm measuring one by four, that means I'm gonna cut my piece of fabric two by five. I want the piece of fabric to be plenty big. Now I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna trim down the design so it's maybe about a half inch bigger than the actual outside edge of the design. Now, through the process of paper piecing, you'll start to notice the process. There's steps, one, two, three, four, five. When you're working on paper piecing, the only line that you sew, the only seam that you sew that is different from all the rest of them is the very first one. The first time you're doing paper piecing, this is going to confuse you. You're going to have to do it a couple of times before it stops confusing you. Because once you get into the process, it just flows one after another. You're going to know what to do. But the first step, always the most difficult. When you're doing paper piecing, you're going to follow the numbers. So it's kind of like paint by number. This on the pattern is A1. That is going to be my first piece of fabric. I'm going to sew to it A2. Then I'm going to 3 and 4, 5, 6. So I'm going to follow the numbering system on the pattern. It's very important. I'm going to start by taking my number one piece, and I'm going to lay it on the back side of my paper. So I can see, I'm hoping that you'll be able to see this. My fabric is over the design line by at least a quarter of an inch. So I've laid down my number one, it's at least a quarter of an inch around the um, design line. Now I'm gonna take my number two fabric and I'm gonna put my number two fabric right sides together, right on top of the number one. Now I'm gonna tell you to put a pin here to hold this but you'll notice later on that I actually don't use a pin. Um, once you start getting comfortable with paper piecing, you're just not going to need to use the pin. I've set my machine up with my cutting board right here to the left of my sewing machine. I have my pair of um, thread snips. I have my add a quarter ruler, my 28 millimeter rotary cutter. I've got my cutting board right next to my sewing machine. And my clover iron is over here in my mug so it's not going to burn anything. I've set my machine up with a 2.0 stitch length. I want a smaller stitch length than normal. When it comes time to take the paper off, I want the paper to come off more easily. So if I actually use a smaller stitch length, it's going to make per more perforated lines. I'm ready to start sewing on the number one line. When a design line is inside the entire block, so you see this line is inside the design. I am going to start on that line and I am going to stop at the end of the line. I do not want to start over here ahead of the line or finish past the line. I want to start on the line and stop on the line. You don't have to do 
any back stitching. Um, it will be strong enough, but I can tell you that one thing I like to do, as I start sewing, I like to hold my paper in place, almost like the machine is trying to go forward, but I hold it back, and that's gonna create a little bit of a locking stitch. Now I'm gonna stitch all the way through the number one line. As I get to the end, I'm gonna again kinda hold it in place. So I'm taking two stitches right in the very same place and then cut my thread off. Take my pin out and I use my thread snips. I like to keep all the little threads out of the way. I'm not a big fan of having little threads over the place. So I have sewed on the number one line. Now I'm gonna take and fold my paper on that number one line and now comes the magic of the add a quarter ruler. With the add a quarter ruler, I want it so that that quarter inch lip is on the bottom. So you can see there where my nail won't go past it. Now I'm going to line that ledge up right on that folded piece of paper. So now when I trim off that little bit of fabric there, I have a quarter inch seam allowance. A perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to unfold my paper and flip over. Now I'm going to press my seam over. So I'm going to take my little iron. Now I use my little iron right on top of my cutting surface. And I know that some people are freaking out going, oh no, you can't touch the iron to your cutting mat. It'll warp it. With this little iron through these two layers of fabric, it will not warp it. It will be okay. okay. So I'm just going to press it. Now it's in place. Then I put my little iron back in my mug. All the steps after this are going to be very repetitive. So I'm going to go to my next line. The next piece of fabric I need is my number three. I'm going to use a piece of cardstock. So this is the cardstock that actually came with the add a quarter ruler. I'm going to place that cardstock on that line and fold the paper over onto the cardstock. Now again, using the add a quarter ruler, gonna put it so the lip is right on the fold and cut off the excess fabric. Unfold the paper and flip it over. I'm gonna now take my number three fabric and if I'm looking at my design, it's another piece of the gray background. And I'm gonna place that piece on the cut edge that I just made. So this is the cut edge that I just cut, I'm gonna take and line my piece of fabric right up with it. I'm gonna put a pin in here just so that I can flip it over and not have it move on me. When we flip it over to the other side, we are going to sew on this line. This is the line between the number one and two and three positions. I like to always start inside the design. So on this line, this is going to be my starting point. This is my end point that's going to come all the way off the design. I'm going to start here right on the start of the line. But when I get to the outside of the design, I'm going to sew all the way off the design. So I'm going to come to the machine. I'm going to put my needle down just into the place I need it. As I start it, I'm going to hold the paper in place so I create a little locking stitch. Now I'm going to sew all the way off the design and cut my thread. You can see that I started here at the beginning of the line and I sewed all the way off and then of course I'm going to cut my little threads off. There. Okay. Now I'm going to take the iron and I'm going to press my seam My next step is my number four. Here is my number four line between the one and two. There's my four. I'm going to take my cardstock, place it on the line, flip the design up on top of the cardstock. Using my add a quarter, I'm going to trim. After I have trimmed the seam, I'm going to place my fabric. I'm going to place the fabric edge right on the edge that I just cut. When I go to sew this design, I am going to, again, start on the inside of the design. But on this one, where it looks like it actually is coming all the way off the edge, because there's this angle point, it's actually not. 
So I'm going to start sewing here and stop sewing there. I'm not going to sew all the way through the end like I did on that last piece. Hold it so it makes a little lock and then go. And then I'm going to stop at the point, cut my thread, trim my little threads off. Now I'm going to press. After I press, I trim. So here's my next piece is the number five. I'm going to lay my cardboard on the number five line, fold it back, and trim. With triangle pieces, you do want to be cautious about how you place your triangle piece. So I took a two and a half inch square and cut it in half, so now I have a triangle. When I place it on this diagonal line, you can see the I'm in the design through the paper because I'm using the vellum paper. You can see where that point is supposed to end up. So I'm going to line my triangle up so that the point of the triangle lines up with the design line here on the design. Now I'm going to start to sew. When I sew this time, I'm going to again start on the inside of the design. But this time, I get to come all the way off the design. So, and press. Trim. Place. Oh, now this time when I sew, because I'm near the edge of the entire piece, I'm actually going to start off the line and sew all the way off the line. So I'm not starting in the middle this time. I'm going to start off the design, sew completely on the line all the way off the design. My next design line, I'm going to trim. Place. So, I'm going to sew all the way off the line this time. Press. Now we're to our last piece. So, whoops, trim that thread. I'm going to fold back and trim for my last piece. Place my last little triangle. And so. One last press, and my design, the sewing portion of my design, is actually done. So before we finish, I want to again reiterate the steps. You're going to trim, place, sew, press. Trim, place, sew, press. If you do a few of these blocks, you will have those steps down. So the next step we're going to do is the pressing of the entire block. Thanks for watching our video. Be sure you subscribe to our channel. We wouldn't want you to miss a single one. Leave a comment. We would love to hear from you.